In this episode of Mind Pump, your favorite fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, my hosts and I answer fitness and health questions asked by listeners just like you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a breakdown of this whole episode. Now, the first 40 minutes, we do our introductory portion. This is where we talk about studies, current events. We have a lot of fun. Sometimes we mention our sponsors. After that, we get into answering the questions. Here's the breakdown. So we start out by talking about how we got mentioned on Healthline.com as being one of the best <laughs> fitness podcasts. And yes, they called me an athlete. There you go. <laughs> I'm an athlete too. Yeah, I'm going to need to talk to them. Yeah. Then we talked about body composition and how sometimes you can lose weight and go up in body fat percentage. Totally, totally true. Then we talked about Robo Racer AI and Benjamin AI. This is something that, uh, that, that Justin talked about. I talked about coffee consumption. Uh, so coffee can be healthy for you. Uh, it could be really good for you. Um, but for some people, it's mm. actually bad. Oh, and by the way, at the beginning of the episode, Weak uh, people. Adam was taking Organifi Pure in his coffee. Takes about 35 minutes to kick in. Typically, you'll get a little brain boost when that happens. Mm. Um, Adam got smarter as the episode progressed. Make sure you pay attention. By the way, Organifi is one of our sponsors. If you go to Organifi.com forward slash mind pump and use the code mind pump, you'll get the special mind pump discount on all of their products, including Pure, which is the nootropic product that we like so much. Pure. Then we talked about LA and their interesting practices with the businesses over there. Oh, yeah, oh man. Know. Then we talked about the sun. It's cooling down. Uh-oh going to happen there. <laughs> yeah, not good. Then we talked about Trump versus Biden. The ads are heating up and they're getting really, really funny. I talked about how some people um, are wearing masks the wrong way. You got to cover your nose too. What's wrong there with There needs you? to be a course for this. That's right. Then we got into the fitness questions. Here's the first one. This person says, hey, what do you recommend for maintaining performance while cutting? In other words, when I drop my calories, how do I keep my performance high? Because a lot of times performance drops when calories drop. Next question, this person says, what are the main things you look at when you're doing a new client assessment? Okay, so if you're a trainer, you're going to want to listen to this part. Also, if you're not a trainer, pay attention to what we say because this will help you determine what's the best workout for you. By the way, we actually have a an assessment where Ju Justin teaches people how to do an assessment and then he teaches people how to do exercises based on that assessment. It's a free course online. It's called the Pro it's our prime program. So just go to mapsprimewebinar.com, sign up. It's totally free. The next question, this person says, look, is there any point in taking creatine when you're not training? So creatine, great for strength, great for muscle, good for a lot of other things too now they're showing. Mm. Should you take it if you're not working out? And the final question, this person is interested in our no BS six-pack abs workout, and they want to know how to incorporate that into their current workout programming. Also, this month, MAPS Starter is 50% off. This is a great workout program for home. All you need is a physio ball and dumbbells. It's great for beginners because we get we take you through the process of learning how to work with your body. It's also got some value for people who work out all the time because it reinforces perfect form. Now, if you want to get the 50% off, go to MAPSStarter.com. That's M-A-P-S-S-T-A-R-T-E-R.com and use the code Starter 50. That's S T A R T E R 50. No space for the discount. Oh, also, all Mind Pump Apparel, most Mind Pump Apparel is going to be on massive discount for Memorial Day. It's going to be huge. This sale starts Monday, May 25th, and ends Friday, May 29th. All MAPS shirts are going to be 15 bucks. All other shirts are going to be between $5 to $20. And then we also have Mir products. Those are all going to be $15 or less. Go check them out on our site, mindpumpmedia.com. And it's t-shirt time. Oh, shit, that was my favorite time of the week. Hey, that's my thing. Wow, that was, that was pretty That good. hurt. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We have five winners this week. <laughs> <laughs> I think wow. I strained something. I yeah, I think something broke. Uh, three for iTunes, two for Facebook. The iTunes winners are Gary1077, Tommy Wayne, Cosmic Thrust. And for wow, Facebook, so we have Clara Balha and Nora Alex. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. 
Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. I'd like to open this podcast by talking yeah. about Justin's moccasins. S- slippers? Those yeah, are, those, Pocahontas. Those are, Eat your heart out. Those look so comfy. Dude, you guys are so jealous. Mm. I'm like super warm and toasty, and uh, whenever my feet get, you know- cold uh life isn't good you know what though the the because you have such thick socks and moccasins yeah that's a lot of moisture i don't know if that's good for the toenail that's well, what i was thinking too i'm gonna <laughs> a lot of, i'm gonna let you smell it later a lot of heat going on yeah. <laughs> we'll let you feel <laughs> that must i don't know firsthand if that's gonna help your situation you know what i mean yeah well <laughs> a lot of bacteria going on of, probably down there you know so it's, it's, good, fun- it's good bacteria a lot of fungal times yeah fungal what are you drinking adam is it just coffee or you got the pure in there uh i do have a little bit of that in there did you mix it with coffee? I did. Tried it out. That's a lot of um, not the best taste. That's a yeah. Well, that's it's, a, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, but we'll see what happens. It was a bold move. This is why I like doing this when we podcast. If you drink the pure, so listeners, right now you're listening. Right, time it. Mark the time. It's been going. I, I wait. You should tell them it's been going. I was drinking it before we got started. So well, ten, like how, how long? Ten, ago? ten minute head start. Okay, so in the mm. next twenty five to thirty five minutes, going to say something brilliant. He's going to say something uh-huh. smart. Yeah. Like it's not going to be brilliant. It's yeah. not going to be stupid. It's going to be something. <laughs> no, it's going to be yeah. super profound. I'm not committing to that. Is, yeah. It'll be less dumb. Yeah. And then, yeah, in 35 minutes or 25 minutes, when Adam says something, you're like, "Wow, that's yeah. pretty good. That was pretty profound." Well, it did take a little bit to get this thing going. Yeah, I mean, this is the first time we all are in this new studio. Just, just remember, it's Organifi Pure. Yeah. at Organifi.com forward slash my pump. So oh, that's, that's oh a, remember that's that right away. <laughs> that's what did that right it's away. A, hey, can I read to you guys something real quick? Yeah. Because uh, yeah, I, I, you know, there's this joke that has been going around Mind Pump for I don't know years. What's that? That uh, you know, I'm a tough person. I don't. I, I, you guys can you know make fun of me and stuff, but uh, sometimes it hurts my feelings a little bit. And uh, there's this thing that goes around about me not being athletic. <laughs> Who saying, started that rumor? You guys, <laughs> yeah. you guys keep saying it Oops. or whatever. Yeah. So anyway, uh, Healthline actually is a very popular website. They get like 200 million hits a month. Do you guys know this? Dang. Uh, really? It's ranked. Yeah. It's, it's one of the number one. It's like the, it's in the top 100 websites oh. in the U.S. It's a so basically it's a factual medical and health website. In other words, nothing they say is not true. Hmm. So this is what so what they did. They did a post about like the best fitness and health podcast, and we were on there. Mind Pump actually made it on Healthline, which is kind of cool. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Sweet. So we were in there, and then this is what they said. And again, we're talking about Healthline right now. They got sources and links <laughs> and everything. <laughs> Athletic <laughs> Fact checking. Yeah. <laughs> this, is the, this is the first, this is like the second paragraph. Please don't discredit them after you just boosted them. Wow. Yeah, I know. This is the second it's paragraph. It's going to make me question yeah, it already. They talk about Mind Pump a little bit, and then the second paragraph, it says, this popular fitness and wellness podcast, true, Right, we are mm-hmm. popular and we are fitness and wellness. Yeah, was created and hosted by four. Correct, still there's four of us. Yeah, athletes. <laughs> <laughs> four athletes <laughs> who were fed up with the way the fitness industry focused on people's insecurities about their bodies. Athletes, and I'm like, they did their research. <laughs> Guys, no. yeah, yeah. They, they, they heard about your horse back, game. Bro, yeah, back when you were doing judo. They heard and, about your yeah. horse game. <laughs> Dude, I was laughing so hard. I was oh, reading this. Man. And it said four athletes. And I was like, I'm going to write them an email. Oh, you know? that's great. Like, nah. Maybe not. That's not true. 100%. That's an upgrade. Yeah. That's not 100% true. In our minds. Yeah. yeah. But it was cool that we they, that they mentioned us. I feel pretty. Yeah, I, mean, I, used to, I, used I mean, I still feel around. athletic. I rode a bike yesterday. Did you? Yeah. That, that felt that somewhat athletic. athletic. Yeah. Have on you a, ever- On a hill. When's yeah. the last time you fell off a bike, though? Honest. Oh. I endoed one time real bad going down, and I hit like a, a tree root and just fell right over the handlebars. And smashed my elbows terrible. Now, were you an el- adult or yeah, were you an a adult? Child? It oh, hurt. Wow. Yeah, that's when it really hurts. Ah, oh, damn. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, I don't remember the last time I fell off a bike. That's a good question. You probably don't yeah. ride hard enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I was, I was going for it. I was pretty serious back in the days. Yeah. Really? You know? Yeah, ramps and everything. Did, no, you didn't. Yeah, big ramp. Oh, yeah. See, you watched Rad. Yes, yeah, of yeah. course. Dude, we yeah. were doing tricks and stuff. Hold yeah. on. You actually did yeah. ramps? Yeah, I got yeah. I, I got pictures. I'll bring some pictures of you. No, you didn't. I do. Did you get off? Like, did you come off the ramp or just go up and down? I just 
stood at the top of it and took pictures. Saying, yeah. You know, yeah. Taking yeah. picture. Yeah. You know, like going down and up? Yeah. Not yeah. a half pipe. I think a ramp. I feel know? like we yeah. had like oh, BMX so- and Sal had a road bike. <laughs> hey, how can- this is how bad I am, right? I yeah. thought he was talking about a half pipe. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know. I'm like, <laughs> I'm watching you do like the U. I'm like, well, it wasn't really a U, actually. <laughs> hey, but technically a, a, a half pipe is two ramps yeah, okay. connected together. Very, yeah. I oh. did a ramp one time. You did a ramp or a half pipe? No, this was a, not a half pipe. Okay. Definitely not a I did a ramp. And because I was scared, I did this. I went up the ramp, and then I just the front tire hit, and then the back tire came off. So I didn't <laughs> yeah. jump. You know what I mean? I went, uh, boop, boop, so during that the 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 rad you know years, mm-hmm. I we used to go outside. We built a ramp to do this, and then one of us would lay down underneath it and take photos. I of the remember guy people <laughs> doing that, <laughs> jumping over each other. Did you ever land them on pur- purpose? No, no, we were good. We were good. Wait, I feel like Justin did since he said it. I mean, yeah. Dang, dude! Yeah, I ran, I ran them over. You're, that's messed up. Yeah, we used Less to take tracks. we used to take our bikes uh, behind where I grew up. There were some foothills, and we would ride up the foothills. And then there was like, you know, because the foothills, uh, foothills, excuse me, are covered in grass or whatever. But then you'd see these like narrow paths that would go down. It's not a like a trail, but you could tell that some you know bikers made little trails going downhill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I went with my cousin, and uh, I made him go first. And it was a bad idea. He went down so fast, and then he fell off his he, he, his feet came off the pedals because we didn't really have good bikes. And he sat on the bar all the way down the all the way down the hill. Oh man! So he he wasn't on the seat; he was on the bar. You know, speaking of uh, mountain biking or biking period, do you guys know? You guys know my my brother in law Tom. You, yeah, you, you've met. He's him, right? real serious. Yeah, like he's hardcore serious. Yeah. He's got like a mountain bike that's like six thousand dollars a lot of my friends are too i guess like where i live there's like world-renowned courses so he was he was actually scheduled to go up to your place in two weeks and he got a letter saying that he can't come up there oh because they close the parks yeah yeah all the parks yeah yeah even an outdoor park like that he he was he had already reservations everything he was all he was all bummed about that yeah yeah Yeah. he's but he's like for real yeah so the reason why i brought him up though is and um, this is going to hold him accountable so we were talking yesterday we were uh day before yesterday we're together and i haven't seen him in probably i don't know like a month or two and he's started tracking like his food and fat secret and he's got i forget what app he's using uh he's doing strava and something else and his whole thing is like he's not like a fitness guy he loves to he brews his own beer so he loves to drink and he's a like a chef so he loves to cook and so his his thing is like he does exercise so he could keep his his weight down and allow his drinking right so that's mm. all he cares about really mm-hmm. damage control so yeah. listen to what happened so we're, we're talking right and he is shredded right now. He is like I seen pics, man. He's really he uh, is the the leanest out the leanest I've ever seen him since my sister and him have been together. Single been, digit. Yeah, he's definitely single oh, wow. digit right now. But here's the thing. So we were and he's a real smart guy. So he's he's talking about like his he's you know he's tracking his food. He's doing all this, but he's really he's looking at it just like calorie expenditure, right? And. So we're sitting there talking, and, and I said, you know, um, I know you're happy with what you're doing, and I, and I think it's great, um, but, you know, I could give you a couple minor adjustments that you can make to your nutrition and your plan that would make a world of a difference of your body. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you know, you said you dropped about 25, 30 pounds over the last, like, year of doing this, right? I said, what if I told you you got fatter? And he's like, I didn't get fatter. And he starts getting all defensive, <laughs> right? And he's like, show me his bicep. And I said, yeah, no, no, you, you for sure got fatter. He's no, wait, wait, we're going back. I said, no, I, I said, pull up your food app for me real quick. I said, I bet you, I said, how much do you weigh right now? He's like, I'm, he's like 148 or something like that, right? And I said, uh, I bet you, you haven't hit three days in a row of 130 grams of protein. So I bet because of all the beer that you use for calories, you're grossly under consuming calories, you're grossly under consuming protein, and you're not lifting weights, and you're doing endurance bike riding for four, three, four hours at a time. Your body's definitely pared down muscle as fast as you've lost body fat. So you think that you're lean and shredded, which you are right now because you can see that, but you've also probably lost a lot of muscle. And I'm willing mm. to bet that you're either the same body fat percentage or higher now. Yeah. And he was just so he gets he pulls up his apple quick so he, he's eating like fifty grams one day, you know, sixty grams another day, oh, wow. forty grams. I think his highest was like ninety or Now did you test his body fat? No, I didn't test his body. But what I told him to do, I said, here's what here's what I want you to do. I said, I don't want to try and shake up what you're doing because I think you're doing a great job. I said, I want you to target one fifty. Okay, so target one hundred and fifty grams. That way if you're a little short one day or two days, it's not a big deal. But shoot for one hundred and fifty grams of protein and I want you to follow maps anabolic one day a week. That's it. 
one day a week of sending a signal to your body that you you need it should have some muscle on it. And, and you can have them alternate the, the foundational workout. So one week do one, another week do one. Yep. Oh, perfect. And I said, just do that. Don't do any more than that. Just continue doing everything the same and then bump your protein. I don't want you to, to do anything different. Mm -hmm. What I love is that he's like super detailed about stuff. So he's like- He'll do it. Yeah, he's all, okay, I'm about it. You sold me on this, this idea and I was like, take a picture- track everything and then get back to me in like a month. I bet you you're going to see a huge difference. Yeah, no, that reminds me of, uh, you know, your clients that would do the dunk tank and then they'd be like the leanest they'd been and they'd been working so hard at it and it would say like it'd give them their fat mass ratios and they would be like I tried appalled. To I tried to explain yeah. this to him. I said, this is, this is extremely common. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't until, so I, I don't know what year it was. We were probably, I mean, Justin was with me. So I was at least five years into managing trainers that I got connected to Aaron with uh, Fitness Wave, which is a hydrostatic dunk tank that they would come to the studio mm -hmm. or to come to the gym. And so it became like a monthly thing that I'd have them come down there and then all of my trainers would book their clients. And it was, I would say, 80% um, 80 80 of clients would get on there and be really disappointed in their body fat yet they were down in weight. And I remember a lot of my trainers coming to me like, is this, how accurate is this? This thing right. has to be off my client. And I, listen, if you are pushing your clients and they're restricting calories like crazy and you're doing tons of cardio with them, just because they lose 15 or 20 pounds in the scale does not mean that they didn't also lose as much or more muscle. Yeah. Total yeah. weight is literally measuring the weight of everything. And so it's the ratio, it's the, it's the, your, your composition, body fat percentage, muscle, that's much more important than just total weight. And, you know, I, I used to see, look, here's the thing. If you diet, let's say you lose weight simply by cutting calories, you're almost guaranteed to lose uh, right around as much muscle as body fat. This has been shown in studies. And it's, really, it's your body's attempt at becoming adapted to your new caloric intake. Yeah, efficient. Yeah, because mm -hmm. if, if you eat lower calories, your body, remember, your body evolved. Uh, after you know, humans have been on Earth for thousands and thousands of years, and it's trying to just get better at adapting to its environment. Because if I eat fifteen hundred calories and that puts me at a calorie deficit, in other words, I'm burning more than that. If that just always happened and my body never adapted, I would die. Eventually, I would run out of body fat and tissue to burn, and I wouldn't be able to survive. So this is something that our bodies are very good at, and dieting alone tends to cause that. Now, dieting plus endurance training yeah. tends to cause it even more. Plus not hitting protein intakes. Right. And, then, you and add, that's why I said, I was, I told him, I'm willing to, I said, I know I can't prove it right now, but I'm so confident that your body fat percentage is either higher or the same as when you started all this because of the simple fact of all three things you just yeah. said. He's missing on all of them. Yeah. If you cut your calories, really the, the, the only things you could do to pre prevent that from happening are lift weights and eat a high protein diet. And sometimes even then be, doesn't stop all the muscle loss. It prevents a lot of it, but sometimes people still lose muscle if the workout routine itself isn't the best. You know what I mean? If you just follow like you lift weights, but your routine isn't really good, you don't have good programming, mm -hmm. you'll prevent some muscle loss, but you, you, you may still lose a little bit. So really what you want to do if you're trying to get leaner to prevent that from happening is eat high protein. Of course, you're in a calorie deficit. And then you want to follow a very, very anabolic uh, routine, something that really sends a good muscle building signal for your body. Mm -hmm. One of the best measures for this is your strength. When I would train clients that would lose weight, so long as they were getting stronger, I was satisfied. Yeah. Like if I saw their weights go down in the gym while they were losing weight, that's when I was a little bit you know, concerned. Now, if you're advanced uh, and you're really, really strong, I mean, you're deadlifting yeah, 400 that's really, pounds. That's really common. That's different. Yeah. But you talk about the average person if they get stronger while losing weight, um, that's a great sign. That yep. typically means that you kept a decent amount of muscle or kept all of it or maybe even built a little bit of muscle. Yeah, it all depends how you're measuring. If you're measuring strength in a gym, that was one of the things that we got in a, a little debate with it too because he's like, I don't believe that. I'm I'm stronger. I can tell by the way when I pump up the hill. And I'm like, no. You're lighter. You know, I said you're 30 pounds lighter <laughs> and you have more endurance. Better endurance, yeah. Yeah, you have, yeah. you've yeah. built your endurance. easier. Yeah, you built your tank yeah. and you've lightened the load by 30. No shit, it feels easier. That's yeah. not because you have more muscle. Yeah, muscle. have him put on a 30-something oh. pound backpack and see if he's as strong as he was before. Of course. And yeah. he'll likely of be. Of course. Yeah. I remember learning that as a, as a when the very, very first time I, I tried to get leaner, which I didn't do for a long time because I was skinny. I was wanna... pull-ups become easier. Yeah, I did pull-ups and I'm like, oh my God, I'm getting leaner and getting stronger. And I thought about it for like yeah. 30 seconds. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah no. 
lost <laughs> really. I lost 15 pounds and I did one more pull up. That's not really a good strength to weight ratio. <laughs> that didn't make it. So I'm so excited. I got you guys to watch uh, one of my recommended uh, oh, you know movies last night. Even though we didn't finish the whole thing. What but, was it called again? Uh, uh, what we do in the shadows. Oh my dude. Very dude. different though. You need to do, you need to let the audience know it's a different type of humor. It, it totally is. It, it's something that we all have in common. I haven't sure. laughed that hard in a long time. Yeah, I figured like you guys would appreciate. It. Not everybody. It's not for everybody. It's kind of offbeat. You know, a little bit weird and. Uh, but anyways, I had a good time. Uh, you know, I was glad that you guys liked it. Uh, but the other one was the AI show that I mentioned. You know, a couple Let's episodes watch some back. Of that today. Dude, it's so great. There was uh, I was watching it late last night because I just couldn't sleep. And there was this this company out there is called like Robo Robo Racing, I believe. And their whole philosophy towards this automated driving. You know how everybody's trying to test like their software and everything to see who's gonna have the most um, you know, reliable type of automated car experience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they, they have to get it within like almost 1% fail rate. Mm. Uh, so what this company decided was like, hey, let's do it to the extreme. So if we could take this into the racing setting, so they're going to take actual race cars and make them automated uh, and apply the software at mm. these extreme rates, uh, they feel like they'll be able to develop that technology faster. Oh, interesting. Which I thought was a really interesting uh, approach in comparison to like your Ubers and uh, you know Teslas and I Googles and everybody else. I can't wait. I, I don't think people understand, realize. Okay, when when cars were first created and widely used, um, it transformed society and added so much efficiency and value in, to the world that it's almost impossible to quantify. It's one of those things, you know, that we did that really just took society to a new level. Automated cars are going to do the same thing. They mm -hmm. are going to do the same thing. So much space is dedicated to storing cars, garages, and so much time is wasted driving them and being stuck in traffic and accidents and DUIs. And think about the functionality. You get in a car. Right now, the car is designed for the driver. Yeah. Cars aren't going to be designed for the driver. They're going to be designed for the whatever you want. You're going to you know, call a car, honey. Yeah. Which one do you want? Let's get the one with the bar in it so we could drink on the way to the restaurant. Okay. Yeah. Or hey, we need to do a meeting. Get the one that's got the good Wi-Fi and the whatever. Now, do you, is that how you guys foresee it? Like, I, this is my theory: is that they'll do like an average of what like owning a car, insurance, and gas cost, and then it'll be like some sort of a membership that is better than that. It'll right? be way cheaper. It, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. it'll be like they'll factor that in. They'll be like, oh, the average American spends, let's just say, for argument's sake, you know, six thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. on are they having a car? Yeah, maybe gas, whatever. Yeah, whatever, right? And then they'll go for a membership for nine hundred dollars. You mm -hmm. have got a car, unlimited totally. access to it whenever. And then and and there'll then be tiers of that in yeah, terms of like the right. nice, yeah, vehicles versus the and economical be, ones. And then they'll show up, kind of like Westworld, right? They'll yeah. show up to show up like that, and it'll just well, get in. Well, Think about I'm sure also, it'll be like that. Think yeah. about also the mobility, right? Like if you're underage and you can't drive uh, now, potentially you, as a parent, you could have car pick up your kids, take them place. If you're older yeah. and you can't drive, now you have ex the ability to to go wherever you want. It's, it's going to completely change the landscape. One thing I wanted to point out in that show, like they showed two different competing companies. So this company actually makes uh, the the race cars themselves. They look like Formula One cars. And they have all these like crazy sensors. They have like LIDAR. They have all this stuff like military grade uh, satellite uh, information that they can use and access. And uh, so there was two competing companies coming in with their software. So they provide the har hardware. They have two companies coming in uh, to compete to see how they do. And one of them was like a German company that's like all about efficiency in like real like not complicated code, just real streamlined code. Mm -hmm. And like, so everything like worked and got to from point A to point B, the fastest and most efficient versus the other one was like, use all the sensors, use all this stuff and like make real elaborate, complicated code to get there. And so they're like kind of pitted them together. And it was, it was real interesting Wh to see how it all played out. Which one did out. best? So the, the one that actually did best was the the streamlined efficiency one. Usually, right? Yeah, That's right? usually what happens. Yeah, and, and they actually broke a record, I believe, uh, for, for an automated car uh, in terms of speed. Uh, on there, which uh, I don't remember, it was somewhere over a hundred, but it was uh, it was a big a big step in that direction. Wow, that's awesome! Who, so you know, it's funny. Who's going to own cars in the future? Is the same kind of people that own horses now. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like only we're going to be people. the equestrian. Uh... Yeah, like who's going to own a car? Like somebody <laughs> yeah. who's like an aficionado, and oh, I got to I got to tow my car to the 
area where we're allowed to drive cars still to, to I know. do it around to go around a track. I'm going. banking that like my classic car is going to be worth tons of money. Oh yeah, probably in years yeah. because of that. That's why I, mean, I, know, I go back my and forth like oh, I should sell it. I never drive the damn thing, but I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna. I'll remember. I remember my dad and saying stuff like, "Man, I had this." You know, Mustang Mach One this year, like that, and I sold it back then for five grand. He's like, that car right now would go for like sixty thousand so dollars. Always, be that every time you hear that, you know, it's like if you can hold on to it uh, and upgrade it later on, it's so worth okay, it. Okay, so we were all we all grew up in the nineties, right? What was your favorite nineties car? What would be con- like? What would be a car that if you drove now, be like, oh yeah, this is like- nostalgic. Did you have one in the nineties? Yeah, like 90s. you know, because that's the decade we ugly all kind ass of grew up cars. In. NSX. I know they did, but oh yeah. An That's accurate a great NSX one. I loved. That one's still classic, though. Yeah. Uh, I like that one. <clears throat> you know what? I was actually. always into classics, dude, so I I don't know. Uh, you know what? Uh, remember Back to the Future where you had that Toyota truck that was all lifted and everything? Oh, those are yeah, fun. Yeah. I thought that was sick when I was a kid. With uh, all the KC lights yeah, on. Yeah, now I'm like, dude, Toyotas, please. Yeah, I like- <laughs> That's a cool truck still. Yeah, those, yeah. Are, those are pretty- I was still rock I, I agree. Truck. Yeah, yeah. No, those, uh, the, I mean, a Toyota motor, dude, goes forever. But I, yeah, I was all about it back then, for sure. I like the Supra. Remember the Supra, the twin turbo Toyota Supra? Oh, yeah. That was back big. in the day. That yeah. was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were just 90s. It's just not the best decade. No, ever. dude. No. no they, 90s wasn't they the They lost it after for... the muscle car era. Yeah. You know, once it got passed into the 70s, it got ugly. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so I read a study on um, coffee consumption. That's, I think, kind of interesting. Uh oh. Because you know how there's a lot of studies on coffee. <laughs> Stop looking at me yeah. like that. Uh, furry yeah. shoes is in trouble over <laughs> yeah, here. <laughs> it causes hairy arms, pale skin. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> it's sweaty, happening. Sweaty feet. Yes. It's, <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, right? All these things. No, so, throws your nose. Like, oh, what's happening? Oh, you don't have a big yeah, nose. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. You don't have a big. No, I totally do. <laughs> Why do you think you have no, a big it's, it's nose? Huge. It's it's ginormous. You have a big nose. Yeah, I don't think you have a big nose. It hella about? matches your Look face. Look at this. Oh wow! Actually, to- total two can Sam. Do they get? Watch two can Sam. Uh, no, nah, not too bad. It matches your whole face. You know what though? Hey, Come on, guys. When you're sixty, it might be though. Oh, it keeps growing. You get know, nose, nose, ears. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I'm, well, I'm doomed. And not everybody Anyways. can have a nose like mine. You know what I mean? I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. Ah! Set yourself up. For anyway, that. so yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that, Justin. You no problem. Me. No problem. I want so, you to feel good. Lots of studies on coffee talking about its health benefits. You know, it's it's one of the it's one of the things that's made the biggest U turns in health. You know, like eggs is one of those. Oh, don't eat eggs. Now everybody's like, they're good for you. Yeah. Uh, coffee for a long time, it's bad for you. Now, you know, all these studies showing coffee is full of antioxidants. It's healthy, prevents, it actually prevents uh, things like Alzheimer's and dementia. But Cognitive as a tra- benefits. Yeah, as a trainer, and I'm sure you guys have experienced this, not true for everybody. There's definitely people, in my experience, that just don't tolerate caffeine very well. Sure. And it's not healthy for those people. Right. Well, now they're showing in studies that this is actually pretty true. There are certain genetic polymorphisms. And here's the thing. You probably know if this is you. Like, you're probably one of those people that doesn't like coffee because it makes you feel shaky. You know, you get cold, maybe anxious, you don't feel good. So this is probably true. But it says here, excess coffee consumption for these people can lead to increased risks of certain diseases like osteoarthritis or arthritis. Really? So it can actually not is that, only- Is that because it dehydrates them? Um, no, I don't think so. Why would that? Why would it do that? Um, it has to do with the way they they theorize the way that their bodies process the caffeine that's in coffee. That's the big difference. Some people can consume caffeine; they process it that's very well. Like sucking up all the water. That's what uh, I was saying. I, th- I think what it is is the caffeine is causing a. This is my theory. Some ne- neurological thing. Yeah, I think that the caffeine is causing an increased stress response, which it does with everybody. Hmm. But this stays elevated in them for oh, so long, interesting. Uh, and that high stress response, high cortisol, whatever, not good for muscle, not good for bone, not good for definitely not good for hormones. And you know, if your hormones are off. Then you're probably going to get some problems, you know. With, uh, with well, thanks for crapping me out, dude. Yeah, no, you're fine, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, I've I never met anybody that could tolerate caffeine. As oh, well, I dude. know. Yeah, no, it's it's well, down, been down the hatch. For a while. No, yeah, it, me too, though. But I can't do that. I don't feel like you train that hard. I think you're kind of weak sauce. What do you that. mean? You give up easy. You know, one cup, maybe. Maybe I see you do two, and you're. I know that's because I know how I feel. Yeah, work through the sweats. This morning we worked out, and Justin, first off, is <laughs> he's basically not. Uh, oh, like awake until he has coffee. <laughs> yeah. Like I was trying to talk to him, you know? Yeah. And he's like, don't talk I wasn't me. ready for yeah. it. No, Not until no. two cups in can you get yeah. him to go work No, dude, out. he wasn't responding to me. I, I thought he was mad at me for a second. <laughs> I'll just what? give you a, uh. yeah. I was like, why is he yeah. mad at me? 
And then he couldn't figure out how to use a spoon for a second. He's like, uh. <laughs> so you guys want to like work out? That's you guys want to work out? This guy. I'm you know, just like, he's, uh, he's above me in his yeah. room right now. And I'm like, you know what? This is the last time I let Sal sleep. I'm sleeping in a different room next time. <laughs> fucking six o'clock in the morning. I'm like, dude, we have this massive place, bro. How the fuck are you waking me up right now? Like, all you have to do is be quiet, get down the fucking stairs, go on the other side of the house, and do bang pans for all I care about. Dude, remember when he used to blast music when yeah. we'd stay at the uh, like houses next we'd time go he's traveling. going where Doug yeah. is at he, you're, you're out in the maids quarters bro <laughs> de- detached too. from the house you can be all loud you want on that side of the house oh dude, man that I, was funny I, I remember you did that I used to do that right no yeah. I, dude I thought I was being quiet this morning they, that's the problem that's you trying to be quiet wow that's the problem with this <laughs> he's got real heavy feet you know what it is yeah. I'm, I'm a li- don't I'm, even t- I guarantee if I call Jessica right now she'd confirm this shit yeah mm-hmm. she knows <laughs> okay, I, I yeah she'll agree with you it's this extra muscle mass I've gained just cement you know, Katrina actually Katrina <laughs> claims it's a it's a dad thing. Yeah. She goes, I don't know what ever since Max, you're so fucking loud. Everything you do, you walk loud, you sneeze loud. Yeah. You, everything you do is loud now. Yeah. You're loud in the kitchen. Everything you do is loud. I'm like, what? I haven't changed. I said, I think that maybe you are just annoyed a little bit easier because you've got a kid and you're not sleeping all the time. That's what I it bet is. that Yeah, uh, there's a bit of that. Yeah, I, was, I bet that went over everybody's well. Everybody's on edge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was well received. Yeah. 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 You never say that. Yeah. yeah, by yeah. The way. yeah. Tonight's your yeah. night. That's what I get after that. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing you ever say to your wife is, ah, I don't know if what you're saying is true. Maybe you're just more annoyed or irritable. Maybe just more sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Never. Maybe you should work on that. That's yeah. the worst possible yeah. thing. Yeah. not to do. Yeah. Sleeping was, on couch. I thought I was being quiet, but anyway, um, that was a great great workout in the in the garage. I had a good time. Yeah. Uh, first time everyone was together, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The It's the altitude that was interesting. <laughs> yeah. Anything over 10 reps is it's exhausting. Great. No, I had to take a long rest. And then it was snowing, and so it was a great opportunity. I told Doug to take a Take some photos of I me. I saw you, Rocky. <laughs> Lifting weights in the snow. I called him Jeremy Bundia. Yeah, like it, an influencer uh, over yeah, here. It just was great. It was a moment. You know? Get me and my wife beat her out yeah. in the snow. <laughs> I, I, I got a good pump real quick. Can I tell you something right now? Ever since I watched Rocky IV, I've, o- I've always wanted to do one thing. What's that? Carry a log on your back no, and, and walk up a hill? Maybe. Okay. But, I, but I just wanted to just lift some weights in the snow. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And I yeah. finally did it. You did it. 40, yeah. how old am I? 41, something like that. Yeah, 41. Years old, and I finally did it. Anyway. Wow. Dude, um, L.A., the the, the 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 government there. So what is okay? They're, they're, oh boy! Bro, dude, we didn't talk about this on the show yet. You oh, sent this man. over, I think. They're, dude, I don't I know. I think if- you sent a, a link over that said that. Newsom mm-hmm. said that anybody who was trying not, to not still- Newsom, it was the L.A. Oh, county. It was LA? Yeah, it's it the Newsom. L.A. county government their their local government shut off power the mayor there yeah so, that's some bullshit so what they did is they said it's, i don't know if it's official yet but they said um it's with all certainty that we would keep businesses closed uh for three more months which is just dude look here's the deal okay little Mo- power hungry most businesses can't survive a month I don't know any brick and mortar business that could survive four months or five months without doing any work. Talk about the government shooting no. themselves in their foot because what's happening right now is the there's people that are say fuck it, I'm working, dude. You yeah. have what are you going to do? Black market is here. I, I've seen it already, like more yeah. than I've, I've seen ever seen it. I, I mean, you got you got you got hair salons doing black market right now, dude. I know that, yeah. that, that didn't happen. But before. To, <laughs> but to me, it's like okay, you got to stay shut down. We're gonna make you stay shut down for another you know three months, which now brings the total up to four or five months, which is insane. And then they said we are gonna start shutting off power and water to businesses that don't comply because we control those yeah. things. Yeah. Ooh, I, here's the thing, dude. Uh, Pretty tyrannical. But, yeah, and. They're gonna. I'm afraid they're gonna cause some big problems. Well, what ha- what you happened? Know what, I mean? what happened originally? Definitely. Originally, it was all about we are doing this to to flatten the curve to get to buy the hospital some time to get staffed up to, to make get, sure it's not get, overwhelmed. Yeah, right, we get don't the equipment. flood it, and that's happened. So, and, and now the the latest is they're talking about yeah. waiting until possibly a vaccine. Is that right? Yeah, you know, it's so now having, nobody's in the hospitals and nobody can go anywhere. Yeah, so I was having so Sweden. If I don't know if you guys know this, but Sweden did not take this approach at all, right? Sweden basically uh, get, informed everybody. They told everybody this is what we think you should do. Yeah, but didn't Doctor Drew check you on that one? What did he say? Yeah, you you brought up that, and he said, "Ah, Sweden's not a very good example." Well, but- no, no, no. Compare Sweden to other countries in Europe. And so here's what happened. This is true now. Sweden said they would do this. And the, all these these models, all these predictors, they said, oh, gosh, Sweden's going to have crazy amounts of cases. They're going to have all these deaths. 
Sweden didn't even come close to those models. Now, it is true that Sweden has more infections than their Nordic neighbors, but they don't have nearly as many as other countries that uh, have operated in this way. So really, they're kind of in the middle. They've, they've been pretty good. And here's what their health minister said. They said, the problem with these models is they assume that people don't uh, change their behaviors on their own. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. People do that. You know, I, I don't, A lot of people don't know this. Before shelter in place was kicked up or, or kicked into gear, restaurants already were reporting 74% reduction in traffic. Mm -hmm. People already were kind of yeah. staying away. Self-regulating. Yeah, They're like, I don't want to go out and like risk anything right now. So here was the conversation. I had this conversation with someone because I'm not an expert, an infectious disease expert. Okay, so I'm talking with someone. I'm like, I don't know. It doesn't feel right to do this because we're, we're supposed to be a free country. And they said, look, we either are free or we're not. So free means if you, we tell you of the risks, if you want to risk yourself, that's up to you. If you don't, then don't. Now, he said, look, it's perfectly along the lines of freedom for if you're sick and you go out and we know it, now you're in big trouble. Maybe we throw you in jail. We mm -hmm. give you a, you know, a huge fine. Maybe the person you infect can sue the hell out of you. But if you're, if, other than that, other than you knowingly infect, you know, going out and risking other people's lives, he said, you know, inform people and then they have to make those choices for themselves. And then people tend to act in ways that, you know, protect people a little well, bit. Well, I see it I see it happening at my at my local grocery store. I mean they they don't there's not a law saying right now that they have to wear a mask or gloves in that grocery store, and but everybody do. does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so well, it, a lot of the businesses require it even cuz that's the thing is like by law you don't have to wear a mask, but they still won't let you in unless you have a mask. So some stores are doing that. And that's yeah. private. That's a private that's their, business. That's their own decision. And I think, totally. and I think that's I think fine. That's a smart move. I yeah. think if you're going into a public place, especially to me, I look at the or at least for me, the the two places where I'm at the most risk are grocery stores and gas station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't think of anything else where I'm probably touching very high some, traffic. Touching yeah. something yeah, exactly that's so high traffic that if you know the if there was one person that possibly came through here that had it that yeah. I could potentially pick it up. So, you know, if I, I've got gloves and, and a mask I keep in all the cars and if I go to a gas station, I put them on real quick, I use it, throw them away when I get back in my car, and then I do the same thing when I go to the grocery yeah. store. Well, so here's the risk that I say. So let's there's a debate, like is it gonna help? Is it not gonna help? I get that. And again, I'm not an expert. So I have my own opinions, but you know, mm -hmm. take them with a grain of salt. Yeah. But here's what I see, okay? When you're in a position where the state is telling you what to do, and then they say, okay, we're lifting the shelter in place. And Everybody be careful. People are going, it's like, it's like a diet. Like you put someone on a strict diet, right. then what do they do when they finally go off? They binge. Yeah. And yep. so I'm afraid that people are going to rely so much on the state telling them what to do that when the state says, hey, it's okay. And then they're going to go, oh, cool. Everybody, everybody Spring safe. break. Yeah. And then they're going to do a bunch of stupid shit right? yes. because they haven't taken that responsibility themselves because they're told not to take that responsibility. They're told to listen to their they're people. Oh, man, well, this and at a... this point, you really have to weigh in the economic uh, factor to what's been happening. You know, like how how we're able to even recover if we keep going. Oh, dude, there, I I read it. I'm gonna pull it up right now. There was an article in I can't remember what the article uh, the, the name of the article. It was like uh, San Francisco Eater Eater dot com, and they said that uh, that uh, no, that wasn't it. There was another one. There was another article that talked about that that a good percentage of restaurants have already said that they'll never reopen no matter what. Mm. I think it was something like a third. Really? Yeah. It was like a huge percentage of these yeah. of restaurants are saying that they are not going to be able to open no matter what, even when things reopen. Oh, my, here it, is. My, it was Bloomberg. Sorry. One quarter. One quarter. Wow. A fourth, huh? It says right here, one wow. quarter of, of American restaurants will not reopen. This is from uh, That's Open That's a total table. bummer. That's a lot of businesses. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's you know, my, my brothers, both, I have two brother in laws, both of their companies actually, after this, are not going to require people to come into work anymore. Yeah. Wow. It's just, yeah. it's just a, it'll be a That's new, not a bad thing. I think yeah. that's good. No, I think that's cool. I think yeah. Twitter's doing stuff like that. I think Facebook's moving in that direction also. There's a lot of companies now that are realizing like they're just as productive with their people at home. So, you know, you could save a lot of money by not having massive buildings. Now, let houses. me ask you this because hmm. a, a big, most of those are tech companies, right? Yes. Yeah. They're all, you know, tele they can all be done that way and, and be done pretty well. The Bay Area is so expensive, mainly because there's a lot of tech jobs, which yeah. are high paying. High paying. How do you, what do you think that's going to do to the housing market? Well, that's area? the prediction, right? The That'll prediction is that all, and I think that's if you're somebody who's looking to invest, especially in real estate, I think that a smart move 
is to look like on board, look at bordering towns to like, like an pick, hour or two hours away. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. like an hour, I'd say away. I, I think would be a, a smart place to start, like uh, looking for places that what they cost because uh, you know an hour out of San Jose and the houses you save a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars. Oh, at least more than that, even you know you can get a place in the in yeah. towards the valley, which is forty five minutes or an hour away. And you say Bakersfield coming up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't yeah. know if there, but yeah. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, I I think that's going to happen. I think that's becoming more and more common. And then also, if you if you think that things are going to go in the direction of uh, you know uh, self driving vehicles too, I think that will change it. Imagine how how cool would that be? Well, yeah, because now you know an hour commute because of traffic becomes thirty minutes yeah. because traffic. You're is, doing work in the in your car and that yeah. yeah. And That's that. what I mean, you can go an hour away, less cars on the road because they're they're automated now, and then now you don't have to drive. You can mm-hmm. sit in your car, work on your laptop, answer emails for your first hour of work. Really, mm, so that's crazy. Yeah, and I I mean I I think that's coming. I mean I I feel like it's going to be that way in the next. <laughs> decade or two we're well, going to see this that. is definitely going to shake up the, like everything like everything's going to look different from here on out it's, it's going to be real interesting how it all pieces back together well so okay so no, just to crap you guys out a little more do you oh, guys know man. what uh, oh, man. <laughs> i was trying to move us past that do you guys know what uh solar minimum is no. Oh, is that like when uh, you can only, like when you have solar panels, they you can only use so much and the rest you have to give back? No, not at all. Wait, wait. <laughs> are you talking about the, the, the sun? Guess. Like now we're going to have freezing ass weather? <laughs> Dude, so, so check oh, okay. this out. Okay, I read this. So, oh, no. so, the, so the sun goes through cycles, right? And uh, sometimes it's hotter, sometimes it's cooler. And so we've been, of course, we track the sun to see what's going on. And they think that, this, that they, they're pretty sure that the sun is going into solar minimum which is going to potentially cause lots of <laughs> temperature lowering to happen on Earth, and this is going to last for a little a little while. I'm well, cool with that. Yeah. Why is that such bad news? Well, because this, so now we need to produce more carbon. Because it is may, what you're yeah, exactly. It may cause uh, f- famine. Because remember, a lot of crops and stuff rely where they're grown rely on a particular type of solar schedule and heat or whatever. It could cause some places to have freezing temperatures. Droughts, like an ice age. Yeah, I don't know if it'll go that oh, far. Man, <laughs> holy shit! Oh my god, tough. the apocalypse you, is real. Did you guys find out if that picture of L.A. was a real picture? Did you see that? That uh, of the smog, how much it's cleared, like how much you. Oh, can I see? thought it was Gavin Newsom is is Hitler. Did you? Did you? Did <laughs> you, did you, did you, did you didn't see that, that picture. I was like, not? wow, no idea. Surfers were not happy. Yeah. Did you guys? Did you guys see that? Did you see like the you, before? You could and, see like uh, mountains in the back. Yeah, before before COVID, and then and 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 current picture of uh, L.A. Like, yeah, I saw that. Like ridiculous. Amount. Has anyone read any like uh, analytics or statistics on that? I don't know. No, no, I haven't. It'd be interesting to see how much uh, how much that's dropped yeah. ever since everyone's not driving. So, what, what happened with Newsom? Oh, so they had a protest. Uh, a, a bunch of surfers, I think, in Huntington Beach, and uh, oh, there there that. was like uh, flags and banners and all this stuff, and there was like a, a Nazi flag with like uh, a Gavin Newsom's face in the middle of oh, it with gosh. a little Hitler stash and everything. I was like, wow. Yeah, it says <laughs> Newsom doesn't surf or something. Like right? That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, I we, was I was like laughing. Can a bit. we I'm please sorry. stop comparing everybody yeah, it, we don't like to Hitler? It's like it's, it's like yeah, go to. It's, but it loses its power. But even now. on that side, it's so funny because it's just, I don't know, man. Like, you just see it slung back and forth now on both sides. Everybody's like, you're Hitler. No, you're Hitler. Hey, no, speaking you're a of Nazi. Slinging, isn't the, hasn't the, the campaigning began with uh, Trump and Biden? Oh, is, yeah. Is it oh, starting to ramp up get, or what? It's starting to get ugly. <laughs> it's going to be fun to watch. It's, it's, it's going to be such a good. Biden is, uh, boy, he's going to be fun to, it's going to be fun to see him get attacked. <sighs> Trump, of course, they'll hit him with the same, you know, the stuff that they always hit him with. But Biden's going to be an interesting. There's a bunch of people coming out saying that Dude. he sexually, you know, he, he, he was inappropriate or assault or whatever. Yeah. So there was this video. They're going to hammer him on that. There was sure. this ad where um, that the Trump campaign ran. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is brutal. It's got Hillary uh, talking about how she's supporting Biden and how much she likes him. And it's got Biden next to her. And then it's got clips of people accusing Biden of sexual misconduct. And then it's got clips of Hillary saying at other times, all women should be believed. Always believe the women. It's got other people like Kamala Harris. <laughs> oh, all women man. should. And then it's got a video of Biden, you know, those creepy videos of him like hugging kids. Yeah, and smelling it looks like, their hair. looks like stuff. he's smelling. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. It's going to get ugly. This is going to get Lo- so- Lots of face, like palm slapping going on. This is going to get so. Ugh. It's going to be very interesting. Yep. They're trying to push um, uh, voting uh, by mail 
for this this uh, not is it voting by mail? All voting by mail. I thought they're trying to do it online. And oh, I hope not, dude. But okay, and, and did we not forget already? Like this whole thing with Russia that hacked. Every, like, are they not worried about that now? It's being online and through computers. Like how susceptible that is to being hacked. I know. I feel like I won't trust it. Yeah, you dude. I mean? Come on. I feel like I won't. You know, because right way now it's more just, easy to manipulate. Right now it's decentralized, so there's like local voting. You know, areas will count their ballots, and they're not they're not federally controlled, mm -hmm. which I like because it yeah. it reduces the risk of less it shenanigans being, of it being fixed or whatever. But anyway, you know, oh, also the 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 Senate passed a bill. It's not passed totally yet, but the Senate passed it that is going to allow the FBI to track your search history forever. What? Like no, yeah. So so right now there's like a temporary like they can track your search history because it's you know COVID. They want that extended forever. So now they'll be able to go and just check your. Of course, they want that. Yeah, don't. You? Yeah, I don't Isn't know. Isn't that fun? How yeah. how we go through crisis and then all of a sudden we lose that, a lot that, more liberties. All that stuff, I don't worry too much. There's too many people on this earth for them to be like really. Paying. You're not worried about your search history? No, I'm not, dude. It's not like yours. <laughs> it's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not like yours. It's like, I was doing research. Yeah, yeah. sounding. Yeah. yeah, how does this work? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're just like trying to find ridiculous things and uh, like, wow, you're really into this. Oh, that's so, that's so you can't, hey, you can't search anything in Google that starts with the letter P without giving yourself away. No, no, no. <laughs> that's not me, dude. <laughs> I no, it's not. That's all. He, uh, that's all his fucking search engine needs is P, and then burr, here comes everything. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's so not true. You yeah. can try it. Try yeah. it yourself. Let's, Incognito let's mode. Let's experiment. Yeah, no, dude. Um, are you guys seeing people? I, I this. I hope this isn't happening a lot. Are you guys seeing people at the grocery store or whatever wearing masks wrong? Uh, Have you guys seen a lot of this? Like around their crotch? Hundred percent. No, I haven't seen it that far, but like under their nose. Yeah. Why? What are you doing? Uh, well, not I only not seen that. Not only that, they're shifting it. They're adjusting it. Their hands are going inside well, their. You mask. know what I've seen a lot of is the wearing the uh, the elevation mask. I've seen uh, that. Doesn't too. that it's still you still breathe the air coming in, don't you? You still it still comes in. Does it really? It doesn't so. filter it. Yeah. I, I thought about it just, just constricts the yeah. air that you have coming in. Yeah, yeah. I want to do an experiment where I just like face painted one on to, and like just to see. Yeah. If I if I, if wasn't, I there, passed. wasn't there a meme going around where some guy was wearing like a cheesecloth or something like that? That's what he was it's, wearing. It said oh, placebo yeah. on it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that, that's yeah. the one I saw. Yeah. yeah. Well, the mask isn't necessarily to protect you. The mask is to prevent your spit and shit. From coming out of your face, right, right. So that's what the but you could it, it, the same effect as you burying your your face into your arm. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But yeah, I've seen people. What, a just, lot of people wearing masks just around uh, their mouth. Their nose is hanging out. I I actually saw a mask. This is a true story with a slit where the mouth was. What? Apparently, and it was a worker. I'm not going to say where it was, but I'm sure they did it because they were sick and tired of you know eating and having to move their mask. So there's a little hole. And the man like, God, man, people are yeah. dumb. Yes. First question is from Evan Brandenburg. What do you recommend for maintaining performance while cutting? Maintaining performance while cutting. Oh, that's a good question because we always talk about maintaining muscle. And it depends on your, you know, what you're doing, what your performance uh, measures are. Like, is it for endurance? Is it for strength? Ultimately, um, you know, when you're cutting, if you cut too hard, regardless of what type of performance you're looking for, you're probably going to notice some performance losses. In other words, if your calories are too far below what you're burning, you're going to find yourself hitting the wall while you're trying to, to train. So number one, I would say keep your cut mild. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Don't do a crash cut. I, I, would, I would say try not to eat less than mm -hmm. or have more than, excuse me. Uh, maybe a, a 300, 400 calorie deficit at the most is where I would kind of. Yeah. Well, this is why we kind of would always talk about mini bowl or mini cuts uh, as a better strategy for that too. Cause I'm always worried about that. Like, you know, dropping um, and reducing uh, performance quite a bit. Cause if I'm in a, in a big cut, Oh man, like going back into a heavy lifting day, you just, it, it's a fact. You're just not going to be as strong and, and, uh, you're not gonna. Your output isn't gonna be the same, so you just kind of have to factor that in. Well, yeah. if, if performance is, it depends on like what's your what's more of a focus. Is the cut more of a focus, or is the performance more of a, of a focus? Yeah. Because if the performance was more of a focus, then I actually wouldn't even cut calories at all. Hmm. I would I would increase performance by increasing the the volume or increasing the, the so just burning the, more. Yeah, the duration that you're doing it. So if uh -huh. I like, for example, run faster, jump higher. I don't know what we're talking about. 
but whatever the performance uh, markers that you're looking at hmm. uh, and you want to get cut, I would increase the amount of whatever it is that I'm doing, but I wouldn't reduce my calories. So I think that's one of the surefire ways to help keep performance up without losing a bunch of muscle mass or losing performance. Just turn that volume up. Right. Without yeah. and this is what this is actually similar to the conversation that I was having with my brother in law. I was like, you know, if you if you have a day that and it's computing that you've burned, you know, five, six thousand calories, you know, you don't want to only eat three thousand or twenty. I mean, try and get up. I mean, obviously you're not gonna probably eat six thousand, but have a, a pretty healthy day of eating. You know, don't don't constrict that much because if you do more than likely you will end up eventually. Yeah, and I would also just monitor your performance. So if you're cutting and your performance is starting to suffer a lot, stop the cut, go to maintenance, increase your calories a little bit once performance comes back up, mm -hmm. then get back into the cut a little bit and see what happens. Yeah, undulated a bit for sure. Undulated a bit if the performance is you know super important to you. Keep protein intake high typically, especially if strength is important for whatever performance you're looking for. High protein intake has been shown to maintain uh, muscle mass and strength uh, better than lower protein diets when a cut is being employed. I would also look at supplements like creatine. Creatine is a non-calorie strength improving supplement. It, it will reliably increase strength in pretty much anybody that takes it. There's a very, very small percentage of people that won't notice strength gains from creatine and creatine is not a, a it doesn't have calories so you could still stay low calorie in fact if you're if your calories drop and you decrease your meat consumption mm. you may be con you know decreasing your natural creatine consumption because that's where it's found no that's a great point this yeah. is one of those times where we don't recommend supplements that often right we're always going the al natural as possible but here's a great example of where mm. i think creatine has a ton of value mm. Cut when you're cutting and you're looking for performance, nutrient timing also can make not a huge difference, but it can make a small no, difference. Oh, that's another incredible yeah, point. Yeah, that's yeah. A, I mean, simply that's another thing that yeah, I've always given. Especially someone like that, like before you go and do whatever it is that is, whether it be, you know, like my brother in law, uh, downhill mountain biking, if you're playing basketball, a sport, before you go into your athletic endeavor, you know, make sure you have a, a sufficient amount of calories going in, and then then you refuel like right afterwards. That's one of the best ways that you can make sure you. keep Yeah, that I would food. say um, you want to have a decent amount of calories, carbohydrates, proteins, uh, a, at least a couple hours before your big, you know, competitive whatever you're doing for for your workout, and then like Adam said, have your calories afterwards. So if let's say you're working out today, a good chunk of your calories. Should be the you know one to two hours before your 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 workout and after and right after nutrient timing here makes uh, more sense. Not going to make a huge difference, but it makes enough of a difference to for you to do this. Next question is from Rolex Sabor. Yeah, what are the primary items you look at for new client assessments? The primary items that you look at for an assessment. I'm I'm one of the more important things. Okay. So if I look at the whole assessment, which includes the questions that I'm asking, because that I, that makes a big difference. I'm asking questions like, um, how many days a week can you realistically work out uh, long term? This is a very important question because that's going to help me determine what kind of workout I'm going to be putting you on. If you tell me it's only once a week, that's going to be different than if you tell me it's three days a week. Also, I'm also trying to get you to start with something that's going to be consistent. And, and typically people, when they start working out super gung-ho and they say they want to work out five days a week, you got to find out what the realistic forever number is and start there. Their goals, that's obviously important. That's going to determine the workout and the nutrition advice. I'm going to give the person their exercise history. So you want to have a good questionnaire essentially so you know who you're working with. Then the second thing is I'm going to be looking at their movement. Now I'm going to be doing a movement assessment. Now, since we've created MAPS Prime, the MAPS Prime assessment has become one of my favorite mm -hmm. movement assessments. It's become my favorite because it's simple. Simple is almost always better than complex, even if simple is not quite as accurate as complex because simple is easy to administer. I could do it quickly. And here's the truth when you train a client you're always assessing their movement. So it's like I do an assessment one time. This is what I, now this is what I go off for the whole time I train you forever. Every time you work out with me, I'm watching how you move. So those are the main things that I'm looking at. I don't think I can add anything to that. The only thing I would add is to tell people to, if you're asking this question and if you're curious about that, you absolutely should be signed up to the webinar, right? So it's free. Go to the, the mapsprimewebinar.com and sign up and watch Justin take Doug through an assessment and 
you know, I, and, and I'm not sure what this person is looking for. If you're, if it's more questions like the park you stuff that mm-hmm. you'd be asking, or it's more like, what are you looking at as far as like their movement? Because those are two different yeah. things, right? They both gain a lot of information for, uh, for you as a trainer, uh, and both are equally valuable cause to your point. So yeah. like asking questions about their commitment level and how many times a week they want to train is extremely important if I'm going to build a program. Uh, but n- I think nothing it trumps uh, looking at how they move because yeah. that's the number one thing, that a way I can help them. I think that, yeah, it, and it's a great place to continue the conversation that you start initially by asking those questions. But like we had mentioned before, and people have asked us questions like this, a lot of times they just don't, they're not aware that they need to uh, reveal that information to you. Like I was injured, you know, five years ago and I walk a certain way and I, you know, I feel tightness and you're not going to get any of that information until you actually put them through the movements. And so what's very revealing through these three, you know, very simple tests is it covers all the bases of all the different options for the joints uh, Mm -hmm. to kind of show you uh, kind of a a little bit of a history of what, uh, you know, they've been through and what kind of abilities that they have and, and then, you know, that way you can take that information, draw up more of a vision of, of what they're going to accomplish uh, by working with you. And I think that's that's what they want to hear the most is they want to know that there's a plan and it's pretty specific to them and they could feel immediate results from it. Yeah. And, you know, OK, so here I'll tell you what a bad assessment is besides a trainer not looking at anything. That's the worst. Here's another one that a lot of trainers don't realize is bad. The overly complex assessment where they're doing measurements and they're looking at angles and they're doing all kinds of insane stuff that's it's it's too much yeah. unless you're working with like an injury and you're a rehab specialist it's too much stuff because the reality is as you're training them their body's going to change you have to assess them every time you train them yep. and really here's the value of an assessment for a trainer 100% here's here's a little secret okay the value of an assessment for a trainer is to show your value to a potential client so that they can hire you. Because again, you assess them every single time you train them. There's no amount of information you can get with one assessment that's going to last you longer than yeah. a month. After that, that assessment, you can might as well throw it out the window because the person's been working out for a month and things have changed. Next question is from AK Josh 84 Is there any point in taking creatine when not training? Oh, I see. Um, you know what's funny? Creatine now is being uh, promoted as a health supplement. Yeah. Because, so of all the supplements that are out there, it's probably one of the most studied Mm -hmm. and good studies too. It's been studied heavily for a very, very long time. It's been shown to be across the board safe. Um, uh, If you're healthy, you don't have any health issues, totally safe. It reliably builds uh, muscle and strength. It's got cognitive benefits. It's got heart heart health benefits. It's got uh, they're showing other health benefits. It's uh, I, I see wellness practitioners now putting it in their supplements for people who aren't even trying to build muscle or get stronger. Creatine, I think, in the next five to ten years, will be one of those like one of those supp- one of those things that'll be in your multivitamin. Yeah. Even do you, you know think this is a result of of you know be like red meat becoming demonized so much? Oh no! I think this is just the result of uh, of studies. Just so many, stu- like I see heart. I'm I, I'm actually reading articles written by heart health specialists mm-hmm. that are recommending creatine. I I've, I've seen I've talked to doctors now who are recommending small amounts of creatine to their elderly population, people who don't even yeah. work out or anything. They're starting to give it to them. Um, it's it's what it's again. It's gonna be one of those things that you're gonna hear people just you know. Like your mom is going to take a supplement for health and you're going to look at the bottle and it's going to yeah, say I, I one agree. gram of creatine. I see value in it. Yeah. I mean, why not? I mean, especially if you know you're somebody who is on the lower end too of like red meat and protein intake, So, which I think is a very common. The average person that I would assess and look at their intake, almost every one of them, the, the average people, I'm not talking about the people that are already conscious into weight training and macros, like- mm. Those people are different, but the average person that uh, would hire me almost always were grossly under eating uh, protein. And so since that's the main source for you to get uh, creatine, yeah, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. I saw, I read a study. This is an animal study, so please don't do not do this. But the animal study showed uh, pregnant animals that, that were supplementing, that they gave a little bit of creatine to, um, reduced risks of neural development issues, healthier mm. offspring. And why is creatine showing all this stuff? 
it's a naturally occurring substance. So it's an, it's an all animal products or most animal products. And what it does is it, it fuels the mitochondria of the body. And the mitochondria is the energy powerhouse. It's like the engine of all of your cells. And if your mitochondria are healthy, you're healthy. If your mitochondria are not healthy, you are also not healthy. And this is, you know, you hear a lot of these, these uh, biohackers talk about oh, yeah. mitochondrial health. Creatine is the, it's consistently shown to improve that, you know, more than anything else that's out there. So I think it's probably, now here's the thing, not for everybody. There's definitely a small percentage of people that will take creatine and get gastrointestinal issues. Mm -hmm. They'll notice like their gut will be a little off or whatever. If that happens to you, don't take it. But for most people, I'd say you probably will notice some kind of benefit. Next question is from Diener SF. I'm interested in the No BS Six Pack Abs program. How would you recommend that I incorporate it into my current programming? This is this thing's been flying, you know, because we put it half off, and so many people are doing this. And yeah, um, it's a program that I created uh, back in 2016, I want to say, or maybe 2013. 2014. 2014. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. so it was a while ago. <laughs> Younger um, years. Or maybe actually 2013. It might be 13. And so it's, it was a program designed to build the muscles of the core so that they're visible, right? So to give you that that six pack or whatever. The workout is designed to have, I think, two or three what are considered foundational workouts. And then on the other days, there's what are called trigger sessions. Regardless of what workout you're doing, just swap out your ab workout with what we what you have in the no BS uh, six pack workout. So whatever your ab workout is, don't do it. Don't do that in your workout and just replace it with the no BS uh, ab workout. And then on your off days, do uh, the ab trigger sessions, which are low intensity exercises designed to keep. So the does muscles. that mean you you recommend the foundational days on the foundational days of your training? Then also okay. Now here's because I've, rec I've recommended the opposite. I've actually recommended that. You do your no BS foundational days on your trigger or focus days of our programs. Now, yes, when you're doing MAPS programs, because yeah. the way we write our workouts, then what I'd suggest you do is take out the ab section of whatever MAPS program you're following, do your normal foundational workouts on your non foundational, let's say MAPS anabolic days. That's when you do the no BS six pack foundational days. Okay. So you're I mean. doing you're not doing them on the exact same day. Now for everybody else, they may be following a body part split or whatever workout. Mm -hmm. Just replace your app. Now workout. I think why we're talking about no BS, we have to bring up something that I, I've got a lot of concern about too is you know how much equipment is required and if there is any equipment required, are there replacements for those movements? Yeah. So yeah. you need a physio ball, resistance bands because I show cable exercises. Resistance bands work just fine. Then I do a couple exercises on a bench. You could very easily take a chair and do a lot of these exercises. Uh, there's a reverse crunch that I do uh, on the bench. Um, you could do those on the floor. I would just suggest doing them much slower because you're not doing them. Up yeah, the I do that and I grab the bed frame and kind of go that direction. Mm -hmm. So yeah. really then all you, you technically need then is a physio ball. That's probably a must, right? Which yep. you can get those shipped over to you on Amazon for super cheap. Yep, yep. And then hopefully you have a set of bands already that would replace any cable stuff. And then the stuff that requires a bench, you could use for a chair, like the Roman. A chair seats, or right? the floor, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all of our free resources, guides, and books. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal. Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug. Doug is also on Instagram. He actually shows the behind-the-scenes stuff here at Mind Pump. You can find him at Mind Pump Doug. 